another episode of Mr. Badger Talks to Utter Scum, and I'm here with my good friends, Toby Bingles and Paul B- Bobson. Uh, is that correct? Not quite. Close, but... Yeah. Close uh, enough. Close enough. Close enough! Uh, so, so, uh, uh, what, what, what have you come to educate Mr. Badger on today? Well, we thought today we'd sort of like bring a, a subject to you that's close to our hearts and obviously one that we feel, you know, your your wisdom is bound to sort of, you know, have a, an interesting valid viewpoint of. Which Diabetes. Is the, that's, well, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good thing as well. I've got some emergency snacks just in case you're feeling you're going to fall into some sort of sugar coma. But it's yeah. drag is the thing that we're going to be discussing with you today. And like obviously the Birmingham drag scene. The effect of wind against a solid object. Not quite, not quite. It's um, it's a little different. You can have another go at it if you want. So we're, we're talking about drag artists, um, people sort Dra- of dressing up and um, defying gender stereotypes. And oh, I, I, I don't like people that dress up. I think they're weird. Yeah, I mean, kind of, you know, we, we thought you might sort of have that view on it that sort of a, a grown adult sort of wearing a, a weird costume to make people yeah. like them more might come across to you as like an uncomfortable and natural thing. But we Perverts. thought, we could, yeah, we thought we could perhaps bring, you know, we can bring a fresh perspective to this to you and obviously sort of, you know, how to educate you. It might uh, help you, it might help you in many ways overcome your difficulties. What do you mean? Well, as Toby said, the the whole dressing up and whatnot. You know, maybe it's time to to address that a little bit more. See what statement you're making about society. I, I don't like the way this conversation's headed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm living my life how I want to, and I think we should all be able to do that. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. yeah. We should be able to have sex with kids. <gasps> um, so, so we're here to forget about that. We're here to talk about. The the drag scene then. So yeah. if I'm not mistaken, that's where men cut their penises off and push it into each other's bottoms. That that isn't. I mean, the second part to that certainly can happen. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think you have to fully cut it off. I mean, I'd be concerned about getting it lost anyway, like that way. So, yeah. do you keep it on like a chain round your neck? Um. I tend not to. Um, might be a personal choice if you do. I was going to say, to be fair, mine doesn't do anything anymore, so I, I might as well have a go. At least I mean, some... if it smelt or something, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some people might want to do that. It's like an interesting way of, like, you know, adding an accessory to an outfit. Does yeah. the rapper two chains? He has two chains around his neck. Perhaps he's got double dicks. We don't know. So <laughs> he could do like a shark. They've got two dicks. Badger fat. Well, they didn't know that. They get knowledge dropped. Boom. Yeah, I'll write that down. So, but uh, so uh, the, the the drag scene then, uh, if you had to try and boil it down to a, a quick explanation, Paul, what what would you say it was? Um, drag is a it's entertainment or art, so it could be entertaining or a bit more political. It's people dressing up in whatever gender they are, dressing up in a way that kind of plays and messes around with gender in a very exaggerated way and then they entertain with that they kind of just do what the hell they want they might sing they might do stand up they might lip sync you know just have fun with it entertain what what's a gender toby can deal with that big difficult question <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw oh, yeah. I, I, we had a meeting at work once and they had an agenda i bet oh, it's always good to have a yeah having a good agenda and stuff as well let's well you know okay uh, I mean, obviously, just off the top of my head and stuff, um, and, and I'm not quoting, uh, you know, the dictionary or Wikipedia or anything in any way at all. But obviously, gender is either of uh, either of either of the sexes, or obviously, you know, sort of it's yeah. it's, a, it's a broadly defined sort of term which can sort of uh, you know cover the. See, I feel like I'm just I feel like I'm digging holes for myself here now. We're trying to sort of describe this, well, frankly. You, you mentioned Divine, and I read somewhere about a drag artist called Divine who ate her own shit. Yeah, in a film yeah. called Pink Flamingos, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yes! Do, do you eat shit? Um, uh, not as much I as I used to when I was younger. I find it plays up a bit with my stomach these days, yeah. and obviously you need a peppermint tea or something to kind of calm your stomach. <laughs> I try to avoid it generally, but yeah. Because you know. I take it as well. Mr. Badger. Sorry. 
Do you eat your own uh, shit, Mr. Badger? Oh, I wouldn't be here now if I ate my own shit. I think uh, it's the only thing that my stomach can't handle. Yeah, it's uh, my, my my digestive system uh, has to cope with a great deal. So it, it really does have trouble extracting any goodness from my diet. So what's left is just pure poison. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. A, but uh, the, 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 the drag scene then, um, is it a, a strictly... Since we've talked about gender, we'll go on to sexuality. Is it a strictly homosexual affair or is it straight? It's for anyone. Um, obviously, you know, you've got the, the LGBTQ plus acronym, which I'm sure you know every letter and what it, I, they mean. I can't and, spell. You can't <laughs> spell. I know. Well, I mean, so it stands for uh, lesbian, gay, um, LGBTQ, uh, bisexual, trans and Queer. So it's it's a big, broad family of of many different sexualities. So anyone can perform and come and watch, and you'd probably be welcome, Mr. Badger. I'm very sure you would. There's not many places that Mr. Badger is welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'd probably be welcome if they hadn't Googled you prior to you sort of yeah. turning up. Something so yeah. What's a Google? <laughs> well, it's 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 a it's a device for sort of people that don't know anything to be able to pretend that they do know things. So. I could do with that. It, it, it might help me out a little bit. Are you allowed on the internet anymore? No, well, I am, so long as it's not on certain sites or else the ankle tag goes off and I get an electric okay. shock. Well, just be careful on Google then. If you yeah. Can, can I mean, you look for anything on this, Google? You can do, yeah. You might want to go into incognito mode for the things that you particularly want to sort of see. Or you, To be fair, you're probably better off using um, the dark web yeah. Uh, and you can, like a, a yeah a sort of Racist. a talk browser so that you can <laughs> have your searches totally non-tracked and then you can feel free to look for you know drugs guns red rooms which obviously is a place off in the net apparently where people are tortured which is what concerns me about your choice of decor in the set there yeah uh, I, i'm i'm colorblind i have no idea <laughs> What colour I have painted this room for my... Again, away from things that may incriminate Mr Badger. Um, so, so, so we'll go back to the, the drag art then. The, the art of drag. Drawing yeah. with transsexuals. Um, what, when, when did you... Uh, well, again, we'll start, well, actually, we'll start with Toby. When did you first become involved in the drag scene? Okay, so for myself, I think I kind of I started going to some clubs prior to really being sort of in the drag scene. But in these clubs, the nightclubs, there was obviously there was like a drag element, and then like a kettle. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, pretty much like a kettle sort of thing. So I started seeing some sort of drag performer type people being in that kind of club environment, and that obviously sort of you know I got developed an interest from there. Watched some certain TV shows. And then from there, went to support and sort of check out the local scene in Birmingham, which is obviously a very sort of interesting broad scene. And oh, then... Hang God, you never said anything about Birmingham, you dirty bastards. I know, unfortunately. But sort of, yeah. Draw the line at that place! But I, I was going on trips to London first, so that's drastically cut back on the mileage. And obviously it's good for the environment. It means there's yeah. like, you know, less pollution in your set. So that's what we're trying to sort of... Doing it for you, basically. In, in my set, where yeah. the badges normally live only i can't because i'm i'm not even uh, keep this under your hat i'm not a real badger really yeah but i'm a fake badger i'm a fudge that's uh <laughs> did, did uh you and paul meet on the the, the drag scene then yeah I mean, i'm trying to think exactly I, can, I can't remember the exact time i met paul but i do seem to remember that like i think paul was dressed as slender man the kind of internet horror kind of icon is slender man a, a jibe at my weight <laughs> no no, no. It, it, the camera's very slimming it's okay ah, hang on am i on camera we can yeah, see is a... can, can you see my bottom half no no luckily ah, not that's okay yeah carry on <laughs> so, i think so, it, was at, it must have been at an event called glitter shit um Glitter think, shit. Yeah, yeah. Shit with glitter on. Yeah. They yeah. say you can't polish a turd, but it's not true. You can. You can sort of sparkle and shine it up. Beautiful. Oh, that's quite nice. 
A yeah. sparkly, sparkly bum present. Yeah. I, and it was a, the name of an event where I think people just went out, dressed up however they want. It played, what was the music? 90s? 90s, 90s, music. 90s bangers, yeah. as the uh, yeah. bops, as the kids would call it these days. Yeah. That, to, to me, that's music from the future. Oh, yeah. I'm 64. It was my birthday the other week. Oh, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Neither of you bought me a fucking present, did you? It's the post is um it's very difficult with lockdown and everything. I think the postman's recognised me caravan and I got a little bit a little bit messy on uh, TCP the other the other time and I attacked him and now oh. I think he's got herpes. Oh, yeah, it's a shame. Little um, things, little things. So so have either of you got herpes? Not the moment, no. No, no. Yeah, I mean, have you ever been bitten by a rabid badger? I haven't, but one did scare me kind of once on a, on a country walk and it kind of ran across my feet and it was made a hell of a lot of noise. I was quite shocked, to be fair. It was the first time I've seen a badger kind of run at me. So It ran across your feet? Ran across my feet, yeah. It was quite like a sort of a brave badger. I was going to say, you must have massive clown feet. Pretty much. All the you, know the never... about... you know what they say about people with big feet? Stretchy socks. It's true. They're a good lycra cotton mix, so they've got some sort of flexibility in them. Beautiful. Well, actually, that's that's a good point as well. So, um, you you're very you're open to wearing whatever you want to wear. Is it is it a case of you will dress in the traditional masculine sense when you're not on stage, or is it a case of it's a twenty four seven affair? Um. Well, drag isn't that comfortable. Um, especially if you've got like headpieces or wigs um, or makeup or whatever you're wearing. So it's actually quite nice when you're not wearing all of that just to, you know, wear whatever the hell you want. But that is a bit more comfortable, I'd say. Yeah. So so drag isn't, it, it, the, the aim isn't to look feminine like a woman. It's, it's, it's an extrovert, is it? Well, for some people it might be, but I mean, that's the whole thing about drag is that literally there's not really any sort of like anything to bookend it. You can go in any direction with any kind of form of sort of a costuming you want, really. Oh, so it doesn't even mean ch- changing the the the, the, uh, the the traditional roles then. It doesn't mean that a man would dress as a woman, a m- woman would dress as a man. It's literally you dress as whatever you want. Oh. Some people kind of aim to do that, but then they also ask, um, well, what does a, a man dress like? What does a woman dress like? And so that's where they can exaggerate and, you know, go a bit crazy with it. Because um, you've got drag kings, which are traditionally are seen as women dressing in more masculine ways. But, you know, anyone can be a drag king or drag queen. Um, but they're kind of making their own statement. And then you've got the kind of club kids angle, which is where people, um, I think Toby does a lot of looks like that, where it's just very over the top it's devoid it's kind of devoid of gender in a way i don't know what you think about that toby. at the moment toby looks like he's going to fight the karate kid <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean i've got yeah unfortunately i've got this sort of post well not post like i say post lockdown some people think it's post lockdown obviously lockdown is still going on pretty much really but yeah the hair i am i am blessed as a man of a certain age to have like an awful lot of hair and it's expanded during this time of no haircuts so yeah, yeah i've had sort of I've had to whack on a headband to keep it out of my face as well i think i look a bit like josh brolin at the beginning of the goonies yes you do a little bit yes you look like you're going to abuse a mentally retarded man with chocolate well this is <laughs> i mean I, I haven't bought you any chocolate today but obviously this is the reason we've come on the podcast so and I, and to be fair, I'd let anybody abuse me for a Mars bar. <laughs> I've had worse. Someone well, stuck a Toblerone up it once, you know. Oh, it's painful. I'm... Yeah, it was quite nice on the way out. But mine's slack. It was like ringing a bell. <laughs> 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 but yeah, as Paul was, as Paul was saying, and basically sort of, yeah, it's a chance to dress up. It's a chance to let yourself go and to make to be kind of creative and come up with something kind of unusual. And what I found is that it's a really good icebreaker that sort of, if you are, you might think that obviously going out dressed in some sort of crazy way, you might attract 
negative attention and that's probably yeah. true in certain places but in the sort of area where obviously that kind of drag is is quite well known and stuff as well if if anything it attracts positive attention because people want to come and talk to you you know if you walk into um, a nightclub and i'm dressed like uh, you know like i don't know some sort of like weird gothic thing or something people are like oh i'll go and talk to that person that seems interesting oh that's nice so yeah. uh, so being different is a positive thing in your world in our world, it, it can be, yeah. Um, may, maybe not in all worlds, perhaps your world. Differences. The fuck do you mean? Oh, absolutely nothing. But, you know, we hear the rumours. Um, right. We're, we're going to take a, a ten minute break whilst I tell you about... <laughs> Is that OK? That sounds good. Yeah, better fucking add me. I'll right, see you in part two. So we're back for part two with Mr. Badger Talks to a Scum. Do you understand where you stand now? Yeah. Because um, you know what happened to the other lad, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. We, we don't talk about that, do we? No, no, no. Best to keep them skeletons in the closet. Yeah. Well, I buried them in the garden, actually. So uh, the rats have had them. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. if you give it back to the earth, that's a good. Yeah, and they're only little as well. So, you know, it was only like a shoebox size, so get away with that, can't you? These Chinese don't even want them, you know. If it's a girl, they just throw them away. And and the meat is so tender. So, so um, we're... Uh, <laughs> are you all right there, Paul? <laughs> oh, I shouldn't laugh. It's no. hope, isn't it? We should laugh. I, I think everybody should laugh. Laughing's nice, isn't it? It is. It is very nice, yeah. Well, you meant talking of laughing. Uh, you mentioned that on the drag scene, there's drag comedians as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, what what does that entail? Is it just the same as straight, sort of like, you know, normal stand-up where someone will dress as a badger and talk about shagging? I think it has elements like stand-up comedy as you know it where people may stand up and have a bit of patter and you know chat on a mic and maybe sing a song or two they may not talk as much about the areas of interest you have um but there's similarities in that they are there to make an audience laugh yes yeah and uh, but uh, again like it, 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 i take it these are, are not exclusive to drag nights there are drag comedians on the circuit yeah, well, I mean, there are some kind of there's some popular ones as well that have done sort of pretty well, like mainstream. I mean, um, Myra Dubois, who's a sort of drag queen comedian from London, was recent. Was it Britain's Got Talent? I think as well was on yeah. Britain's Got Talent yeah. as well. So got on the TV. And Myra Dubois is quite interesting because Myra Dubois obviously has the character of Myra Dubois, but then they also have a male comedian character they do called Frank Lavender. So they're actually like they're doubling up on their gigs there. Oh, so, oh, hang on. So it's someone that does multiple acts. Yeah, it's like, you know, so as I say, if, if someone dressed as like one thing one night and then got a set that of like, you know, in the same set with the promoter as a different creature or something, thus increasing their, uh, you know, their, their fee for the seat for the evening. I can't imagine that would work. It'd be like me dressing up as a fucking penguin or something. Yeah, it's a bit, bit of a long shot. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so... So uh, with that, you say some of them have got onto the mainstream comedy world. I think the one that I have seen um, was a lovely young man called Hannah Gadsby, and he seems to be doing very well. Oh, yeah, mm, yeah, yes. Okay, I know who you mean. Sorry, yeah. so. Australian Hannah, comedian. Yeah, H Hannah Gadsby is one of the most successful, I would say, drag kings I've ever seen. Right. I'm not sure how Hannah would feel about that, but sort of, you know, I, I, they might be sort of happy that, you know, you no. you find them that ambiguous. You are correct. I should not describe uh, him, her, they as a comedian because they didn't make me laugh once. So, um, but <laughs> while, we're, while we're on the subject still of drag and the multiple varieties, you said a big part of it was uh, lip syncing, of which I have heard there's been a massive resurgence Thanks to Mr. RuPaul. Yeah, 
Um, RuPaul's Drag Race. How old is it now? Ten years old, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. More. It, yeah. it, it seems yeah. to be with a, a more sexually liberated uh, audience nowadays. It seems to be really, really hitting its stride. Yeah. It's, I, it's definitely very um, popular, and it's it's aimed a lot more at the straight audience as well. I think. Yes. Um, a lot of people were inspired by it to do drag. And now what they're doing in drag, they've kind of leapt ahead. They've kind of, you know, they're a bit more progressive than a TV show is. Yeah, because well, from what I've seen of like, uh, pictures that have been shown to me, there are now, say, straight women that will dress as drag women and so on and so forth. So it's not even about swapping gender now. It is about pushing your style to the limits. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. going to the sort of some of the nights as well, we see like uh, obviously a lot of the uh, I'd probably say even a lot of times a lot of the majority of the audience are sort of traditionally uh, obviously like cis femme born women sort of audience Sissy. members. Like, yeah, what's that? What? It's uh, yeah, yeah, they're sort of they're cis women, so they're kind of you know a little bit scared. Yeah, so like a sissy, like you say, like a wimp. I did type sissy into a, into one of these Google search engines, and some bizarre images came up. If I'm honest, yeah. And also, never try looking for bears. You get some uh, some bizarre things coming up when you click bears. Right. The badgers, the badgers not like bears. I didn't like these bears. No. He was pulling his cheeks right open. You could see the lot. Okay. I think he'd had spaghetti. It was oh, it was a right state. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, we're losing it. Uh, so, so what? What? What was it? Sis? What? What's sissy? Um. So, so essentially, you can. Sis is someone who was. Um, is is kind of the counterpart to trans. So, if someone who is trans, they were assigned their gender incorrectly at birth. Sis is the opposite. So, if you were assigned male at birth and you identify as male then you're cis male what what does cis mean not like i don't know crisps in sandwiches because everybody who's straight likes crisp sandwiches yeah I, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think everybody i think universally anybody yeah. anybody quite likes crisp sandwiches so we're all cis yeah, oh, yeah beautiful. if that's what it means then yeah, yeah. so <laughs> cis cis is the ability to enjoy a lovely cheese and onion sandwich, possibly with Worcester sauce. Yeah. yeah. Could be that way. Oh, it could be could be my personal crisp sort of sandwich favourite, which a lot of people don't probably want to go for, which is I've, I found a lemon curd with a bacon frazzle sandwich. Which lemon sounds weird, curd? But it works. It, it's odd, but it works, believe me. I think you're the first person to ever discuss Mr. Badger on the show. <laughs> Well, I, th- I think next time I see you in the in the flesh, I'm going to have to sort of, you know, bring you some of those to kind of pep you up for the evening. Yeah, just bring them out on a nice platter. Yeah. A nice bit of lemon curd and bacon. Lemon curd and bacon frazzles. Do you know what? If if, if that is cis, I think I, I'm going to identify as trans. I think um, I I will I will put myself on the trans platter. That's a do. Do, do gay people, if they go to a Chinese restaurant, do they have a poo poo platter? Have a what platter? A poo poo thought... platter! Oh, yeah, P- oh, that's spelled P U P U, isn't it? I think. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a, a, popular, a popular platter. It's popular in Hawaii as well. Is it? Yeah, which is a, it's a place I've been. Very nice. You should go and visit it sometime. You've been to Hawaii? Been there twice, twice to Hawaii. I'm I'm on a flight ban. Oh, I can't go anywhere. No, the tag goes off again. Well, you're probably, you're, to be fair, looking at pictures on the net at the moment of people crammed into planes with masks on, you're probably safe for staying at home anyway. So, I wouldn't mind seeing people crammed into things. It's uh, it's been a while. Has it? Yeah, Is that it's because of this uh, outbreak and pandemic. Yeah, yeah, probably. Just because of that, yeah. Just that, just, yeah, yeah. Just that's that. the only thing that's, that's cramping your sort of your dating style at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because, uh, do you know, Mr. Badger, it was quite virile in his youth. And all the ladies wanted him, ma- yeah. mainly to appear in court. But, yeah. um, it, you know, I've, I've managed to escape. For the, but let's move on again. 
so, uh, you, you, so uh, do you do you, do you both uh, are you both active in, in in the drag community? Yeah, well, I mean, Paul does a lot of performance. And stuff yes. As well. I mainly more like to go dressed up and go dancing. But what we both do is we both have a little passion project, which we we built over the last year or so, which is we run a night, which we put on in a, a place called Eden Bar in Birmingham, which is called Killer Queens. And what Killer Queens is, is it's a drag murder mystery event. I, uh, this is uh, completely sidetracked because I didn't know he was going to talk about this, but this is a genuine thing. I was asked to perform there for... Uh, uh, it was a, a a young couple had been killed. Uh, it was a, a hate attack against. Uh, I think it was a, a a gothic couple, and they were attacked and killed in Birmingham. So they were putting on a fundraiser in Eden Club. It's uh, yeah. So it, it just goes to show you that even at somewhere as progressive as Birmingham, there's still a lot of hate to different communities, isn't there? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think in any big city as well you get a lot of things happening regardless of how cosmopolitan they may seem. This is the thing. This, yeah, as, as, as much as everybody wants to uh, sort of pretend that we've moved on as a society and that we're all accepting and that we all love each other, there's still a lot of uh, n- negative things sort of like creeping around in the background, isn't there? Yeah, and a lot, of, a lot of it, it's down to ignorance and it's just down to the fact that like, and if you don't get to meet, different walks of life and different types of people then you build something up in your head and you've got like a a preconceived ideas and fears of what that sort of other people are like when literally everyone's just the same and it's just like there's just there's just no need to be a dick just just be chill and just let everyone do what they want to do and enjoy what they want to do simple cut us we all bleed brown yeah yeah Yeah. you might want to check your iron intake and your diet if you are but sort of yeah uh yeah i'm not again i'm not allowed to the doctor's because they got a new woman one, and uh, apparently she's meant to inspect me. There's a, I, I messed about with the thermometer, and when she was picking some it up, and now I'm banned. Oh, all right. No yeah. more tail lifting for you. No, no. She's not even that attractive. It's just, as I say, it's been a while. So yeah. you take what you can get. Yeah, yeah. Right. So let, let's go back to your passion project then at the Eden Bar. Yeah, so I, I sort of do um, I do murder mystery acting, sort of uh, outside of my normal job for fun. Murder. Yeah, murder mystery. So basically, murder mysteries are their evenings put on in sort of like bars and hotels and diet and stuff like this, where there's a meal and various actors or wannabe actors sort of um, adopt the role of characters and sort of there's like a script that we follow, but then there's also a lot of improv kind of work where we have to talk to the tables and they question us about the events of the evening that's happened and that sort of thing and obviously then it leads to a conclusion where they they all write down who they think who done it and yeah. then it's revealed and they can win a prize so what i did is i sort of i've been doing that for quite a while but we took that and we combined it with the drag element from the people that we know the sort of on the birmingham scene and we do drag murder mysteries now where we have various drag performers from the local area playing the parts of the characters and then obviously we get people in and there's like a a story which we sort of follow which i i write for sort of each time and then we we put that on as well and it's good because it literally means i can come up with anything as ridiculous as i want to write about and they're all like yeah yeah we'll do that that's fine and then we get to go and do crazy stories oh fantastic i I take that's not active at the moment though sadly no we were due for one in april which was our latest one which is like a 1920s sort of flapper kind of gatsby type sort of story that then got a flapper yeah got bumped to july and obviously we've had to pull that date at the moment until we know obviously you know what's safe because it's it's not safe for people at the moment to be sat down in any sort of theater environment but it is safe for them to go and cram themselves into the street next to a weather spoons apparently so it's, it's it's tricky it was quite fun in the town. They were all fighting, but uh, they were the same ones that were complaining about sending the kids to school. So, uh, so <laughs> Paul, I, I think you're involved in this as well then. Yeah, I, um, I, I do a bit of the rounding up of, of the other performers. Um, I like to, I think we, we both like to pick a role, um, do some of the acting and um, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and you like playing grumpy old men for some reason, don't you? Have all the characters that we do. I like being a, a grumpy old man. It seems in in, in them. It's. Uh... I like you, Paul. I think we're going to get on. 
Well, we can always see if we can get a role for you, possibly, if you pass the uh, auditions, you know. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we'd have to write some sort of, you know, Tales from the Riverbank type sort of plot. Yeah. But do, you on your... have, do you have to have a CRB check? Um, Not for this. It's 18 plus, technically. Yeah. Um, so you safe. There we go. Well, I'm not sure it's about Mr. Badger that needs to be safe, but, you know. Do do do, do any of the people that uh, come to the nights uh, are any of them easily uh, easily approachable single parents? Some might be. We get what's good about it is we get like a very wide cross section yeah. as well. So then we get people from all walks of life come as well. So I mean, you know, it, for you, it's going to be like pick a mix. You know, there'll yeah. be something that you fancy there, whether it's the pink shrimps or the bananas or the fizzy cola bottles. There will be something for you, I'm sure. Lonely mums. Yeah. The well, ones that they'll make up any excuse in their head for what's going on. We'll, 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 we'll put a discount code out for the next one, sort of like 10% off with the code Badger if you're a single mum to sort of to try and get them in for you if you want. Beautiful. That sounds quite fun. Uh, it, it, is, there, is there any plans during COVID to do anything uh, online? <sighs> We, we thought about it, but I mean, I'm not sure sort of it's uh, it's slightly trickier to do an online one because obviously we could do like a normal story that you could watch passive. But because our night is very much like an immersive, interactive night, it would be difficult for a bunch of people online to ask questions to an actor or something. So we we haven't done it for this. And plus, there's like there's an abundance of online streams at the moment to watch during this time. Sort of, you know, we're all getting stream. Oh, shit. <laughs> one way of putting it everything online at the moment i find especially these fucking podcasts on youtube it's all shit well we'll we'll, we'll, pos- we'll send you some of the things that we've seen that are you know okay i've i've been in some uh drag shows where i've learned to make videos at home um use green screen and whatnot um you know so I could, we could send some of those videos to you and you can give us your your view it, yeah, it's have a, any of them got contact details for the people in the videos? Um, I will say no for a. Ah, oh, fuck yeah. that. Right. So, <laughs> so, we've, we've been, so I think we've successfully, well, you've successfully educated Mr. Badger a bit more on the drag scene, which is just it's people being themselves, being comfortable, being happy, going out, dancing, having a good time. Uh, and then killing each other at a big party at the end. That's, that's a fairly, yeah, it's a fairly apt description. Yeah, I mean, it does, yeah. it does end up in a bloodbath most sort of times. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Mine's ended up in a bloodbath sometimes, but that's when I was in prison. So it's been lovely chatting to both of you, uh, and uh, hopefully I'll, I'll maybe work with you in the future. Hopefully, bump into you for a pint when I'm in Birmingham. That would be good. Yeah, I mean, yeah. sort of like. You know, I mean, obviously, we had the benefit of you coming and doing comedy at my band's gig as well, which would be sort of like nice to get you back if we ever do another gig as well. So oh, that wasn't comedy. I had a mental breakdown. Oh, right. OK. I did wonder about the crying. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember there was a, a lovely comedian called Lindsay Santoro who tried to uh, comfort me in the back. And I don't know what I did. But now, again, I've got a restraining order against myself. So. Uh, I guess it's lovely speaking to both of you. Hopefully I'll have you back on again when uh, lockdown's lifted and we've got some uh, some actual stuff that we can talk about, you know, your future projects and everything. And uh, I wish you all the best. Uh, say goodbye to the boys and girls, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, boys and girls. Bye-bye, everybody.